Hey, what's up guys? Tony here, and here is my pitcher. This is Tony Miller. He is, uh, he was drafted by the Brewers. I think I mentioned that in my last video. Anyways, this is game three uh, for him. Uh, the first game I recorded, uh, it's going to be going up on the Yash Sports, and game two I didn't record at all, and so I thought, you know what? Let's record game three. Uh, and I'm surprised. He's actually a, a pretty good pitcher. And our team is pretty good. 10-4 and four right now. That's not too bad. The Huntsville Stars. Uh, I don't... What, what league is that? I, can, I don't remember what league that is off the top of my head. But, um, yeah, anyways. Um, people will be asking me a couple questions. So, right off the bat, they'll want to know what the pitching style is. The pitching style, I don't remember what generic style it is. But it was Mark Pryor's pitching style. Um, and it, it's probably the one that most looks like my own personal pitching style so I go with it and what's interesting is that if you use a pitching style enough like with the metered pitching you'll get like I don't know how else to explain it besides just say like when I look at the meter not I don't look at the meter to like hit the yellow every time on the return I actually look at it and it, at the same time, I'm kind of looking at my, where my pitcher's body is, and, and I have like a rhythm with the pitcher's delivery in the windup. I don't know if that makes any sense to anybody else. If it does, please let me know because it's something I noticed a long time ago that I don't specifically look at the meter to hit the yellow every time. It's always I always look to release at the same spot um, in the pitcher's delivery and his mechanics. Um and it just happens to be right where the yellow is as well. And I don't know if it's like made to to be that way for every motion, or if it just happens to be this way for this particular um, wind up style. I don't know. I don't. I don't notice it with the with going in the stretch either. I don't notice that at all. Which is kind of like when it comes to pitching, which is kind of interesting because most most pitchers feel like they get more push. And more rhythm out of the out of the windup than they do out of the stretch. So I, I really feel the same way with this particular well with any pitching style, including my own in real life. I don't feel all that comfortable throwing from the stretch. And because of the whole what I just said, you know, you feel like you're in rhythm, you feel like you get more push, even though you know they did studies and statistics and all those sorts of other crap about how you get the same amount of push from the stretch as well. So. Anyways, I just don't feel balanced, I guess. But um, I'll tell you the things that I'm I'm liking about this game, uh, and I brought it up in, in the Outer Sports video, but I'll reiterate it here as well, is that the umpires seem to be a little bit better. I'll be honest. The umpires in 11, there were times where like that would have been called a ball. You throw one on the other side of the plate, it would be called a ball. And the only place that you could hit a strike <laughs> is right over the heart of the plate. And you really don't want to be throwing the ball there or else it's going to get hammered. So it seems like maybe they have adjusted some of the pitching or the umpire. Um, the, the, I guess it's technically the strike zone. Inconsistencies in your pitcher still exist like that that slider. Um, some of the pitches, like I threw one, I want to throw one like high and inside on a lefty or something, and he goes and throws like right over the heart of the plate. It's like, oh, God. It's one of those scary moments when the pitcher doesn't do any anything at all like what you want. He's just like, I'm going to put it there. And, I mean, that's pretty close to real life. You know, sometimes you just lose the handle on something. It doesn't go anywhere where you want it to go. But it seems like that they adjusted – the consistency of the pitchers just a little bit because it, they feel uh, better. I don't, I don't know. I don't want to say like they feel better or worse than the previous game, but there seems to be like your pitcher's inherent control of his command of his pitches uh, are are a little bit better. The, he's generally around the plate, especially being his third game at a Double A level. It, it gives the impression that. That before, if you're on double A as a pitcher, it was like you were pitching for your first time professionally ever. And with this, it makes it feel like, okay, this is two steps from major leagues. You know, they've got the command to get through single A, um, rookie single A, rookie ball. You know, there's like three levels below double A. There's like three levels below single A, too. There's like rookie ball, like single A upper, lower and upper in 
some other things. I'd have to ask my uncle about it. But um, anyways, these guys pitch more like what I would expect double A pitchers to pitch like. Guys that are good at better than single A, not good enough yet for triple A. Either that or it's not like a roster spot. But uh, but as far as the pitching is concerned, they're gonna have to command other pitches. They're gonna have to have general control of these pitches. Well, command and control is the same thing. But um, confidence, control. Uh, of all their pitches and it seems like for the most part when you start out double a you've got that so it makes me wonder what major league pitching is like or triple a level pitching and hitting is like because you've got to pitch to them if you're a pitcher and you got to hit it if you're if you're a position player so anyways um what i did say i think i said it either in the comment section or in the last commentary that i was going to discuss the um, strategy for leveling up a character for this Road to the Show series. And I've come up with this idea. It took me, I don't know, like a day or two to come up with this idea. And it's really based upon like how I level people up. Uh, for your entertainment's sake, I'm not going to record and post every single game. That's just going to get really... Just going to get tiresome for everyone involved. But what I thought would be the best way to do it is do what I do is I set goals for myself. So beyond your um, your training goals, I'll set goals for myself using the performance points. And I'll be like, for position players, I'll say I want to level up contact and power before I move on. And so I'll dictate that to per level, like for double A. Uh, I'll have to look at what Charles Ward's contact and power is right now. It's probably somewhere like in the 50s. I'll say I want to get the contact, right and left-handed contact, up to 65, 70. Power up to 60, 65. And then I'll start working on other things like, I don't know, fielding, base running, speed, um, base running aggression, Durability is a big one. I always put, whenever I can, I can put points in durability. But the point is, is that whenever you have spare points and you're not putting them towards advancement goals, you put them towards these secondary personal goals that you have, if that makes any sense. So I'm going to do that for, I'm going to do that for Charles Ward. I'm going to be putting it points into uh, contact and power. And I'll be mentioning that when I do, I do a commentary. I'm like, oh yeah, and this is what I'm doing, putting this in. But if you don't hear me mention it, it'll probably be because I like achieve that personal goal and I might I might actually just go ahead and say that just so that way everyone goes like oh why isn't he putting points into the contact and power like he said and so for pitchers what I've noticed that works the best well, at least for me is do the advancement goals and then pick uh, take all your points because you're usually gonna have a couple hundred points left over after if you have a good game uh, or at least just like an average game. You don't even have to have like a stellar performance. But if you have like a decent performance, you'll have at least 300 points thereabouts to put into your player. So what I'm going to do this time around is I'm going to put everything into my pitches themselves. Control, velocity, break. And uh, I'm going to start out this game. I started out with the fastball. I always start out with the fastball. I, in real life, I, I am a fastball heavy pitcher. And for me, it's it's like a fat a fat like a fastball changeup combination is a very good combination, especially if your changeup can move. If your fastball moves too, that's great. But to be able to pinpoint your fastball, spot it where you want to, is very important because you can put pitches on the corner, low, even high, and um, depending on what you want to do with it, you can get you can get strikes. You can you can also strike people out. Now you can't throw a fastball exclusively and expect to strike people out because then it's just batting practice. So that's why you need other pitches. But first of all, like I said, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna get the velocities up to 91 at the end of this game. I get up the velocity up to 91 points, uh, and I get the the control up to like 77 or something. So I'm gonna work to get that up to 80. And then I'm going to switch to the slider, and I'm going to work on the velocity to, I don't know, maybe 80-something, 80 85. And then I'll work on the control up to about 80. And then the break, of course, I'll work on that too. So those would be the things. That's the style that I'm going to end up doing. And so you guys will see that as uh, as I progress. And I might show oh, – let's see here. I might show – a couple, um, a couple of games per advancement goal. I don't know. Like I was saying in the last video, what I'd like to do is I'd like to try to do 
one of each player, one video per player, so two MLB 12 videos a week. That's kind of the goal. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to happen or not, but that's sort of my hopeful, optimistic goal. And of course, like mixing in things like Battlefield, um, Grand Theft Auto Five, Forza stuff. I need to like work on my Xbox stuff too. And there is a plan to do a Forza uh, car build in there. So um, stay tuned, I guess. I don't want to stray too far away. I have a tendency to get lost in my tangents. <laughs> um, yeah. So, anyways, that, that's the breakdown about how. I'm going to end up leveling up these characters and, and how to get them to the show fastest. And, and I'll probably reiter, reiterate um, what I'm doing during the next commentary so that I work with these the, both the players. So that way you guys will remember, oh yeah, okay, that's right, that's what he's going to do for the, the um, performance points. And also the different ways you can earn performance points because you can buy them. I remember you could buy them for 11. I don't know why they wouldn't allow you to buy them for 12. It's like a dollar for a thousand performance points. So... It's it's one of those things where like if you it's I don't think anyone should or look bad if you buy performance points. I mean it's one of those things you didn't earn it in the game, but if it's something that you really want and you can afford to buy them and that's what you want to do with your money, then just go ahead. You know, make your player the, the biggest stud in the world. Um, like I said last year, I. I just found the option, so I bought a couple of uh, like two dollars worth of performance points and tried them out. And uh, I mean, it was nice. I don't know if it helped get one of my players to the show faster or not, but um, it probably could if you put enough money into your character. Uh, it just seems for me and my standpoint on it, um, since this is a single player game, you can do whatever the heck you want to, you really can. So it's not like it's affecting a, mul in a multiplayer. Uh, platform so if it was then I'd have stronger feelings about it because I, I don't know it just seems like I guess if it's open to everyone I don't know I'm kind of torn to be <laughs> if you can't already tell I'm a little torn on this because on one level yeah if you can afford to do it then sure you can afford to do it but at the same time it's not fair if you're if, this is speaking from a multiplayer standpoint it's not fair if it's going to be in a multiplayer platform so anyways um, like I said I'll reiterate that stuff later uh, oh, last, well, I'm going to say last thing, but one of the last things I want to talk about, fantasy baseball. I don't know how many of you guys do fantasy baseball. I have never done fantasy baseball. I've done, like, a half of a season of fantasy football, which was, like, four years ago or something. And so Topher and Nestel talked me into this last night. <laughs> we were all on Skype, and, and they're like, oh, yeah, um... Let's get some. Uh, let's get a fantasy baseball league started. And I thought, oh, I don't know. Like maybe I don't. Uh, you know, and that's <laughs> that's that's exactly the response I had. I was just kind of like, <laughs> um, but anyways, I I find I broke down, and so I'm replaying fantasy baseball this year, which is gonna be good because Topher was talking about it, and, and John was talking about it, and they were both saying like, hey. Um, you learn all sorts of things about the players in the league. You learn about prospects. You learn about trades and news and stuff like that. And so I consider myself a, a fairly decent fan, overall sports fan, you know, football, baseball. Uh, I don't know crap about hockey or soccer. But, uh, but those two, football and baseball, are my sports. And so I feel somewhat informed, you know. I, I mean, I don't spend all day, like, on MLB.com or ESPN.com or whatever. But I spend enough time watching, say, Sports Center at night or whatever that I get the gist of what's going on and, like, who's getting traded and what's going on. Um, but I'd like to be a little bit better, I'll be honest. And so the idea that I could, like, possibly get better and more knowledgeable and sort of like the, I don't know, inner workings of baseball and all the, the rumor mills and, and know who players are, that that's kind of cool. You know, that'd be kind of cool to get, uh, I don't know, that much more into it, I guess. Like, have more invested in the season than just as a fan. I mean, I don't know if you can be more invested, especially if you're, like, a Red Sox or Yankees fan. Can you get any more invested in, <laughs> in that besides being that ultimate fan? I don't know. By the way, that pitcher, like, it always happens to me, I swear. I, I don't know what it is. I could, I could pitch against Albert Pujols, A-Rod, top hitters in the league, whatever, I can strike them out. Pitchers, I can never get a pitcher. Like, if you're pitching a no-hitter and a pitcher comes out, 
I guarantee that pitcher is going to hit the ball and he's going to put it in place somewhere and it's going to fall in for hit. There goes your no hitter. There goes your perfect game. It's it's one of those things. It's like it's the um uh oh god what is it the uh, Murphy's law. It's Murphy's law. Anything that can go wrong will go wrong. And uh, and that's pretty much how I feel about that. <laughs> um and let's see here. Uh oh yeah okay so also. Some things I was going to ask you guys, a couple of things. Do you want to see full gameplays like this? Because, I mean, this is going to go on about 17 minutes or so, and it's quite long to watch, and it's quite long to commentate. And so to fill that space with a commentary can be kind of hard. So what I was thinking is, would, if you guys want to see full gameplays, what I might do then is I might just live com them. If you don't want to, then maybe what I'll do is I'll just show you guys, like, I don't want to say like the highlight, but if there nothing happens in an inning, like I don't strike anybody out, then maybe I'll just like skip that inning, you know, or maybe if there's an inning where I just get totally shelled, I'll just show that inning or whatever. So I'm just, I'm trying to make these as uh, easy to digest and easy to watch as possible without, you know, being super long, especially because, you know, this this character is a starting pitcher. And so generally it's going to, they're going to go about 20 minutes or so. You know, if, if I go deep into a ball game. So, let me know in the comment section what you guys think about that. Um, my idea is to, if, if you guys do want to see full commentary or full gameplays, I'll live com them. That way I can sit there and talk about what's going on in my head, um, what pitch I want to select next, and, uh, and like how I'm going to face a hitter. You know, and it might give you guys who might be struggling with some pitching some insight on how best to to handle uh, certain hitters and like what does it mean when a when a hitter is you know was pulls the ball you know foul or what does it mean when you know he hits the ball the other way but you pitched inside on him um, just sort of those indications as to what's going on I mean it, I think they translate well from real life situations into the game but then again this is a video game and the computer is going to hit whatever the hell it wants to whenever the hell it wants to no matter what you throw. It's really hard to fool the computer, but sometimes, and and it seems like in this game, they they act a little bit more like human beings when it comes with respect to being able to miss and not fouling everything off. Like I like I don't know. I had a one one um, game where a guy literally he fouled like eight or nine, ten pitches off, and he wouldn't strike out. I was throwing him in the dirt, and he was fouling them off. It was like, oh my god. So, anyways, that ends my marathon. <laughs> this year I went um, six innings, three hits, seven strikeouts. Not too bad. And you can see my line so far uh, for the season. No decision, though. Uh, we lost it after I got out of the game, apparently. But here we go with the performance points. I already have my goals. Uh, I've already accomplished my goals for this particular period. So I'll put 50 points, got the velocity up to 91, and then I'm going to put 235 into control, which is going to bring it to like, yeah, 77. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Talk to you later.